Guys, welcome back to our show. We have a great one lined up for today. And so before we get going, you know what I want you to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there. Go ahead. Did you get it? All right, good. I don't want you to miss out on all the latest content that we're dropping, so be sure and subscribe right now. I also want to encourage you to head over to PowerMechanical.com where you'll find even more content and boiler-related information. You can sign up to receive our newsletter, get a quote on a rental boiler, a new McDonald Miller, whatever boiler-related your heart desires. So head on over there and check us out. So today we're getting back to the basics. We're going to discuss the different types of industrial and commercial boilers that we find in our plants, and we're doing it right now. So guys, first of all, every boiler operates on the same general principle. There's a heat exchange taking place. Typical to what you see me talking about most of the time is your fire tube boilers and your water tube boilers. Now there is quite a variety of, of boiler designs and concepts available in the modern day marketplace. While many of these designs and engineering advancements have evolved, the basic design and principles still remain. So first with the fire tube boiler. As combustion occurs, the hot furnace gases will travel inside the tubes of the boiler, whereas the water will surround the outside diameter of the tube. And then contrary to this, with the water tube boiler, your fire is now on the outside of the tube, while the water is then inside the tube. So each of these two designs has its pros and cons, hence the reason the general design of them has not changed immensely in decades. But as previously mentioned, there have certainly been advances over the years that have made these designs much more efficient and reliable. An often referenced term in boiler lingo is a pass. A pass is simply how many times the combustion gases passes through the heating surface to create a heat exchange. Obviously, more passes equates to higher efficiency. However, this does have some limitations. The design of a boiler must allow the gases to be vented from the system prior to the stack gases cooling to a point that could lead to other problems within the boiler. Now, there are several other designs that we find in commercial and industrial applications, such as cast iron sectionals, electric boilers, vertical and condensing boilers. These designs vary to meet the different facility demands, namely lower capacity, smaller footprints, and ultra high efficiency capabilities. Now on the note of efficiency, it's important to mention that all boilers are designed to meet very high efficiency standards. How the boiler is maintained, operated, and monitored will dictate the actual efficiency that the unit is delivering. So now let's talk about the condensing boiler for a moment. With these condensing boilers, the stack gases that I mentioned earlier are actually being used to heat a secondary heat exchanger. You see smaller boilers with fewer passes typically will see higher stack temperatures simply because of their, uh, of their design. So it's essentially putting those BTUs that are otherwise wasted back to work. Much like what, uh, what an economizer can do for larger systems. And now anytime that we can utilize energy to reheat or preheat, we are increasing efficiency. And we have plenty of videos on this channel that can point you in the right direction for numerous ways to increase efficiency within your boiler rooms. Now some designs, like sectional boilers, are made to replace systems that may have had larger boilers installed that would be uh, practically impossible to replace in a single piece without deconstruction of the surrounding building. Most facilities these days have factored this into their uh, plans for their plants for uh, future boiler replacements. So as you can see, there are numerous designs and features of industrial and commercial boilers. The variety allows for demands of many facilities to meet their steam and hot water demands with just the right sized boiler. All right guys, there you have it. I hope you liked our show today. And if you did, be sure and hit that thumbs up button down there. And make sure and subscribe so you can catch all of our upcoming videos. And other than that, we'll see you next time on Steamworks.